Inside LAFC, this is a historic moment. The podcast where we'll feature Vince Lorosa. Uh, Vince, who is Mr. Everything for LAFC. I said it. It's the cat's out of the bag. Are you okay with that? I'm okay with it. You got your finger on the pulse of the team. I do. And that's what's exciting about this podcast for me. I'm Max Bredos, and I'll be involved. Uh, the TV voice on YouTube TV for LAFC. Yeah, let's, gotta, not, let's not sell you short, Max. You do. You are the voice of LAFC, <laughs> and I'm the guy behind yeah, the, the scenes. The behind the scenes. Suppose, when, did you, when did you join the club? I joined the club right January 1, 2018. 2018. So I was just a little bit behind you. Where'd you come from? I came from Fox Sports West. So yes. I came from a sports background. And we're talking about stuff that, that no one cares about, so tell them what's going to be on the show. Okay, but the one thing I want to say about you is an uh, amazing base of soccer knowledge. And every time I talk to you, I learn stuff that's, you know, for an old dog at this race, uh, 22 years, I do learn some things for you. So I'm excited. So you're going to have to test me and push the buttons, all right? Yes. Straight up, I'm a straight up soccer junkie, and you will not get by with the regular, you know, just yeah. same old stuff. Let's, let's be like Bob would want us to be. Let's talk about okay. real football. I hope you know what you're in for. Okay. Down. Let's go. Before we begin, we do have to uh, give our very best to an already incredible family of podcasts that exist in and around LAFC. So let's read them out here. Uh, Somos LAFC, Heart of LAFC, Shoulder to Shoulder, Defenders of the Bank, and FCFC. Hashtag season pass. The season pass. I mean, I think... The and then we are inside LAFC, just to be 100% clear. Yes, we beginning. are inside LAFC. We are just another part of that family. I think one of the things that you really have to look at and say is... A community built up around this club from day one. And that goes for digitally, digital yeah. community too. So these guys, I mean, they have unique voices. Uh, I think the biggest compliment we can pay to them is that we listen to them. I listen to them. I know that you've listened to the podcast and, and I think everyone should continue to listen to them. We're just another podcast coming, should, into the, coming into the ranks that's already been built up. You should populate your day listening to every LAFC podcast. So you go, I know more than they do. Which would be the case if you did listen to all of them, but why not Yeah, cool. get after it? There's a lot to talk about. Unique voices, you're going to get all of them. And to show you my, I'll give you a little soccer knowledge. I Good. remember back I in the day. I'm all about a big introduction here so we can set the table because we'll be here every week yeah. talking LAFC. Well, so I, let's, let's, yeah. My soccer knowledge is going to bring you in here as well. I remember back in the day when we used to only be able to watch Max Predos. And it was, it was Christian, you and Christian doing Christian basi Miles. basically doing uh, River Plate Boca, the big games, the Classicos. Right? Oh, Christian Bozo. Chris, Christian Bozo. Yes. That used to be the one game we could get, and I would watch it over and over. So now you don't have to. Why watch Why didn't the same you tell this to me over. earlier? I know. I see. Life was simpler back then. And I have he, I think people like the simple life. Unfortunately, now that's technological, digital age, and streaming, and everything is. We gotta do it. We gotta keep up. But we we put some time in now, so yeah. Well, and like I said, instead of watching the same match over and over again or reading the back pages of Soccer <laughs> America, you can listen to five to six different podcasts it's all about LAFC. Right. And there's five days in the week, so why wouldn't you? Right. Or you could dream back to 1999 when uh, Vince LaRosa was in his, uh, in his his apartment lit watching uh, River Plate San Lorenzo ad nauseum. Yeah. Which sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. I'm not quite that old, thankfully. <laughs> 1999, feel, I was starting me, high school. That's what I was doing. All right, okay. all right. You're in your in your college dorm. Yes. Preparing no, for college. No, still starting high Whatever, school. Whatever, dude. No, nope, no. Nope. I right. was well into my professional career. All right, we're gonna talk about what we have. Tell them, tell them what we got coming up. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. We're gonna get in. We're gonna look back at the final preseason game, game at Bank of California Stadium, where we join you from right now. Uh, that was against the Vancouver Whitecaps, and then we will get you ready for the season. We'll talk about obviously LAFC, but where their position is. We'll maybe touch on some of the other teams and. A look at the schedule as well, but mainly looking forward to that sporting camp, an incredible opener. We're opening at home. Uh, three of the first four games are at home, and uh, it starts Sporting Kansas City Portland. But we'll focus on Sporting Kansas City, which is first in the West. Any any, any little teasers for that? I mean, first in the West, only team to beat LAFC twice. Yeah, I brought that up. To, I brought that up to Bob yesterday, but he was all right. I go, hey, you didn't beat them. I didn't know how to. I didn't know how to step around that. We go, hey, this team you didn't beat, and I think he appreciated it when you go, yeah, yeah, and it's. Think we got we got to fix that. Yeah, I think when you look at results, I mean, we're, and we're going to get more into this, but I think when you look at results, <laughs> when you look at results, you're going down the meandering path that I will provide I here, Vince. Okay. I know you're you're the host. You're supposed to be taking yes. me through this. I want a little teaser. A little teaser. Yeah. I mean, when, but when you think about it, if if you had one team in the West where you could say, I'm not worried about them. I think they're going to be fine, and and not just are they going to be fine, but I think they're going to be an elite team in the West. It's probably sporting. Excellent. See, that's right. That's why I'm glad. I'm glad I did that. Finally, we're going to have some fun. Look, we're soccer fans. Uh, we're immersed in the Champions League, so we're going to look at some of the second legs coming up. Can we give a few predictions? 
We're also going to give LAFC's projected 11 for the opening week. I'm backtracking a bit for Sporting Kansas City, so we'll give you what we believe is going to be the starting 11 and maybe have some thoughts about who might be able to break into that 11 with some frequency ahead. Uh, and You watched the Oscars, correct? I did. And I have, I have takes. You have takes? I have, I have takes. takes. I was very active on Twitter. I have more takes so than built off takes. of your takes on Twitter. <laughs> so this is going to be good. Good. We're going to have some fun with that. But let us begin with uh, the Vancouver Whitecaps. Friendly here. It was open uh, to the season ticket holders and they good crowd out. And it was a pretty intense game. Yeah. I mean, it was like you looked at it and go, what's going to happen? And you look at every sport and they have that one dress rehearsal. I know the NFL, it's like the third, second to last preseason game where they really get after it. This was... That game for LAFC, we saw it, but the intensity was up. And I, I think maybe the big story to come out of it was Carlos Vela leaving uh, with a knee injury. They, they had the MRIs, it was, it was negative. Well, it was all intense to see him at the beginning of the season. But it was his intensity that I really followed early on because he was getting after it. He was going full bore, he was going to some challenges quick and trying to win the ball, and guys were committing to tackles. So I think that's all great. You, you hold it with, you watch it with bated breath because you're like, okay, careful. And then for that very reason, obviously the whole the whole stadium is going to be a bit nervous. But uh, all, all all good indications on Carlos Vela. But uh, so far, let's start with that, and we'll get more into the game because we are going to project our eleven as well as we look ahead to Sporting Kansas City. But Carlos Vela and his health was a big issue. But I think we can be pretty much at ease here. Yeah, we can get it right out of the way. I think it's kind of much ado about nothing. We can say it to everyone. It's Wednesday morning. Yesterday we were both at training. Carlos was in full training. He was moving around fine. There was no restrictions on him. So I would think. That it was just some soreness, just some bruising. So Carlos Vela, crisis averted. Yes. He should. I, I would think he's available. I mean, if there's one thing I know about Carlos, if he is in the stadium or there on the day, he's playing. Yeah, we saw that last season. That's Every great. chance he play, and he wants to play the whole game. Yes. He's not like, all right, this is. Uh, that that was one of the most eye-opening, just wonderful moments of last season. You say Carlos Vela is in it. This is not a guy who's in it. I'll pick my spots. He's in it to play the whole time. So. Yeah. And I think in, if we want to get direct, directly into the game, I think the dive in and I think you nailed it. So we're looking at this game to say, okay, this is the last dress rehearsal. We see a lot of the starters go deep into the match and they win 1-0. 1-0 against a team coached by a guy that you would think if anybody knew how to pick holes in LAFC's defense, yeah, Mark Dos Santos would know coach, how to do yeah. it. And then, but they hold them to a 1-0. Now, look, I know that's not exciting on paper. You want to see a 5 6-1 or 5-0, but I think a 1-0 might be the best result that you could get out of it a was final tune It was exciting for me because there was some moments of leakiness in the goals in the preseason games, which weren't at this uh, organization or intensity, I believe. But I think if you get that result, and we know LAFC can score goals, we, we maybe the difference with them being a really good team and a great team is how well they play defensively. And I think that's a great sign. One, I'll take 1-0 all day. I'll take 4 or two, four, three as well on occasion. Yeah. Four, three, uh, but one zip is that's a fantastic score for this team. I, if people know me, I'm a Juventus fan, so they know that one nil is my jam. Right? Yeah. Score one nil, it's <laughs> over. But yeah, if you if you had to say there's any question marks coming in, goal scoring is not one of them. I'm not worried about this team scoring goals. You would say, how does the defense retool, especially with someone like Eddie Segura playing a lot, and we'll talk a little bit more about him, um, and then the midfield. The midfield is so important to this team, not just going forward, but in their shape going back. And I think my biggest takeaway from that match is, at least for the first 45 minutes, the three midfielders, Edward Atuesta, Mark Anthony Kay, Lee Wynn, positionally looked solid. There was no real times where they were flat and they left big gaps in between them and the defense. And they're doing this against a Vancouver team that has Jordi Reyna, a guy that likes to snipe in between the lines. He can really hurt you. Uh, Freddie Montero's back still rate him highly as a good player. So to see that, those are the things you want to see in the last preseason game. Positionally, the tactics are there, the, the ideas are there. And of course, having Mark Anthony Kay back and, and looking like he's bossing things a little bit more. And I would say on a lesser note, Edward Atuesta is back. To me, this preseason, the first few games, I, he was driving me a little bit yeah. nuts. And at the back end of the season too, with some of the games he played, it wasn't quite, I wouldn't say underperforming, but not quite I think what the guys were looking for in that position yep. uh, as a guy who can win ball and play a more defensive role. And I think, I don't want to get sidetracked here, but I think that opens the door for Lee Wynn because he has to play that position too. But if you can take a little pressure off him or he can do the distribu distribution and get that front line involved, it seemed natural to have two more defensive-minded guys behind him and, and not behind him, but just alongside them in K and, uh, in, and uh, uh, Atuesta. And I think those... Uh, it works 
it's it's going to put pressure, I think, on Lee Win to to make sure they make those guys are going to contribute as well. But I think there's a it's it puts it it puts Lee Win in the spotlight for a lot of ways. But I think that he's the kind of guy I feel comfortable taking that. It's just those 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 connections to the guys who score goals is a big way. But I, I like what I saw from that trio. Yeah, they're midfield dynamic, so they're going to have to trust each other, right? But at the same time, you're going to want to see what they do best. Do I want to see Lee Wynn having to track back all the time getting the ball? No. Is he going to have to? He's going to have to sometimes, yes. yes. He is definitely going to have to. But I want to see Lee Wynn with his head up in kind of a, a, a creative, almost a number 10 role at times. And if that defense works properly, you will get almost dual number 10s. You got Lee Wynn, you got Carlos coming off the side. I mean, that's the best case scenario. So I think that is encouraging to see. And I know we both really liked... Walker and Eddie Segura. Tell, yeah. tell me a little bit about what you saw. Well, because I think Walker, a lot of demands were put on him all season because he had a different dance partner back there all the time. We saw great signs and we saw signs where it didn't work. Obviously starting with Laurent Simon and then moving along to Daniel Silva, who's still an option here. we got to make that abundantly clear. Uh, he's, work, he's worked on his, uh, his paperwork to get here and some injuries and now ready to rock. But I think that partnership looks very easy and Segura is such a good guy, you know, you, you say it so often, a guy who can play out of the back, but just make those passes. And he's not afraid to make those passes. I love seeing that because you always have this, and the, and the perception is changing with defenders not being at least timid to make that pass. He's got, there's nothing on that him. So this is kind of like that look of that new defender with a long guy who is robust and uncompromising like Walker Zimmerman. You figure that's a match. So, I mean, and I don't want to diminish, I think Danilo Silva's gonna play a big role on this team. But that partnership worked well, and I think, I think the three guys that I'll focus on, K, Atuesta, and Segura, those three had a nice dynamic, and I wonder how much Segura's presence helps Atuesta, because those two look like they have played before. They're both Colombian, they don't really play before yeah. different clubs, but there is that familiarity, and I think K bought in on it as well, and then you get that really just locked in defensive group pairing where I think there's possession's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be pretty abundant for those guys. I don't like that we're agreeing so much to start. So hopefully at some point we'll. we'll I look at your notes. Yeah, hopefully at some point we'll, we'll back it off. But doesn't it feel that way? It no, it does. Yeah. We'll, we'll back it off at some point, and I'm sure we'll we'll bump heads. But I think you're right. Eddie Segura comes in here, um, and you're dead on with Danilo. He's he's a little late coming in, and that's not his fault. But that puts you behind. And then when you couple it with the fact that Eddie has taken leaps with each week, um, yeah, there's two things you got to come in and do when you play for LC. You got to be able to pass out the back. And then you got to be able to cover gaps. And I think in that Vancouver game, we saw Eddie being able to pull over. Uh, he had one very nice slide tackle. I believe it was on Jordi Reyna that really kind of broke up a play. Um, something that could have been an emergency defending yeah, moment. I got, yeah, right, did, I remember he, that. Yeah. He just showed up. So I think, yeah, I can't not agree with you on, on Eddie Segura. I mean, some of these other guys we're, we'll, we'll talk about. We'll talk about a little bit more in the, uh, in the preview for week one. But, you know, guys, they got their run in. Latif got his, his minutes. Diego Rossi. Uh, the, the big discussion, I think, a lot of people from when I were at the stadium is like Christian Ramirez is, by all accounts, the, the guy there. And Dio, same in Danilo Silva, is a guy who's going to get, everyone's going to get it wrong. We saw it last season. There's just going to be so many opportunities. But uh, Christian Ramirez popping his head away, I think we'll talk about that projected 11. But that's something that, A, creates, uh, creates competition, but also... Everyone's, everyone's going to want a little taste of the ball, so we'll see if that, if that happens. But, well, I'll get your thoughts on that 11. We're going to get into 11. I think and, we'll, we should, that, and we'll talk about that right. there. I think we should round it out with a little talk about... The jersey? This, we are not just an audio podcast. We have a video format over... It's this way. No, I'm just showing oh, you the those, jerseys. Yeah, yeah, those jerseys. I, I have the kid on. I know, but it's better when you see 20 of them, no? Oh, yeah, they look... It's like a proper team. They look fantastic. Max, what... Tell me... Part of that day was a community day. You got to have some fun out there and you got to talk about the jersey. Yeah, and I got to with... some wardrobe changes. You did some wardrobe changes. Tell me t tell me how good it was to see everybody again because that's that was my biggest takeaway. It's great, but it was just a little taste because you know the full taste is going to happen Sunday and I think we all have to prepare for it. the experience that we're going to have ahead. And we're really pumped with forward seeing everyone out at the uh, stadium, but it's just good people everywhere. I've never... I should say I've never, but walking to work every day, certainly for game day, is the best experience. Not just because of what this club's doing, but the stadium is always got these open doors and everyone's pleasant, you know everyone, and it's easy to manage. And you could scream over the other side of the, the stadium and someone will hear you. So it was wonderful to see that, the engagement, people are excited, the jersey's fantastic. Uh, I know like Ulysses, or the, the, the wonderful Ulysses Roman who works for us, it's, it's grown on him, it's grown on me in a big way too. So. 
Yeah, wa- watching you mingle with everyone, and one of the great parts is everyone's so and different. And no, no michelada. It was waved no. in my face multiple times ago. No, I know you actually. I'm on the clock. You refrained. Yeah, and I appreciated that because I was. <laughs> we were trying to wrangle you in and make sure you stayed on time. But I, I, just everyone's different. You have the people with the. You have the that crew with the gold jacket. So much fun. Then you have the hardcore soccer guys, and then you go out in the north end, and we yeah. all we all know what they bring. Um, and you know what they did? What was good is like they they experienced different parts the same, and you can do that in mm-hmm. a small dose. If you're on uh, the south end, you want to come in, you want to see what's going on 3252. If you want to pop around the, where the, the Figueroa side of the state, you can all do that and you can do it in five minutes. Yeah. Well, let's, let's close this segment on this. I, I know we saw, we, we both agreed we're, the jersey's growing on us. I, I've loved it kind of from the start, not to throw anyone under the bus or, or say oh. that you guys are latecomers. But, Whoa. But I want to say this. I, one of the cool things I saw was people getting a number and either a street or neighborhood on their jersey. I thought that was something interesting, yeah. something different. I want to do that. I don't know what I'm well, married that, to. That's yet. what I want to ask you. What What would you, let's talk about I live in Redondo. Do I don't know if it's going to be like, hey, Redondo, okay. my street is it's small surface street. I don't know. Can I give Maybe you, PCH. PCH is fine. I'll, I'll, can I give you mine? I think you might like yeah. it. Yeah. So uh, if people don't know me, I, I used to play in bands and I think what mine would be is uh, from my time just going up to LA. Uh, I played, Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Sunset Strip and the number 19. <laughs> and the reason why 19 is because at 19 years old, I definitely played in some clubs I should not have been allowed in. Good man. And I can tell you this, when the guy comes up to you and says, you're 21, right? You always say yes. Yes. And so that, that would be, I think mine, Sunset Strip 19 would be what I would get on the back of mine. Yeah, I had an ID. Yeah, of course. Do- it was slightly doctored. Did I let the cat out of the bag? It was yeah. a long time ago. All right. Statue of limitations. <laughs> Statue of limitations is over. Okay, so we come back, we're going to give that projected level. We're going to preview the game against Sporting Kansas City in the le- ahead. We'll have some fun here. It's the Russell Max Brothers. This is Inside LAFC. We'll be right back. We're back on the Inside LAFC. This uh, podcast will be available everywhere. For your listening and viewing pleasure, yes, as I like to say, Vince Rosa, Max Prados here. Are you enjoying it thus far? I'm Is having it everything you expected and more. Well, if people don't know, anytime you're in the office, we basically do a podcast anyway, so yeah. we might as well just we're not paid for it, but we might as well just throw a microphone in front of us and uh, give it to the people. That's a bad idea if I wasn't aware of it. Yeah, okay, yeah, lo- no, I haven't been taping you when you're not aware of it, <laughs> thankfully for you. Good. All right, let's get ready for the season. It's here. It's a weird sensation because we've been waiting and waiting, and now it's here. Like, oh, are we ready? It's, I think they're ready. And I'm going to start with a big umbrella comment. And I've been doing my homework on all 24 teams, Major League Soccer. You're lying. I have. I'm preparing for some of the shows we do on YouTube TV, which if you haven't subscribed to, you should do right away. We have great programming on there. It's going to be great for the game day experience, YouTube TV. It's a great, it's a great service as well. Yes. It's a great service, so check it all out. So, um, okay, so I'm going to give this umbrella comment. I've looked at every team and I'm looking for, you know, things that give me comfort and things that are flawed. And it's hard for me not to include LAFC at the very least in the top two, three teams in the league, at least as it would apply to a team that could finish with the supporter shield or best in major league soccer. I look at the depth, which I think is as good as anybody. I look at the star power, it's there. I think there are teams that may have better players at positions elsewhere, maybe more, say like more so than what LAFC mm-hmm. has. But I look at the big picture and everything that's built up from last season, and I say, I'm not gonna say it here, I don't wanna put too much pressure. I would, I, 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 I could easily say they will be the best team on season's end. Will they lift MLS Cup's a different story, but I think they are well equipped for that. And this, by and large, the vision of the club to have that. I think they can take some hits and injuries. They could miss Carlos Vela for a bit, and I think they will be able to push through. So, what do you think? I, I agree with you. We're going to be homers again. But, but you I, saw I, last year. Because right? I see flaws in some other teams. And again, those teams have produced well in the playoffs, and LAFC has not done that yet. Granted, this club is still in diapers, but they'll, they'll, they'll develop a pedigree in the playoffs. But right now, there might be teams that I trust a little more, like the Portland Timbers because they've been there and done that. Uh, on the Easter side, obviously Atlanta, and I think they have a big old target on their back, and they're asking a lot for some, some young players, some new players they're gonna put in there. So why not LFC? It seems very fluid to me. Yeah, I mean, over the course of a season, you would say teams that have continuity in their team, they have depth, with, which I think this year more than ever, LFC's depth is really there. I mean, the signings that they've made, uh, they really only needed to tweak around the margins and then just fill in spots so that when you do bring guys 
in from you know your 15, 16, 17 slot. They're very good players, and I think we have that now. The playoffs are a different story, right? That's just a knockout competition. Yeah. But if we're talking about get, if at least getting to that hurdle and getting to the playoffs, I mean, yeah, LAFC easily with this roster is a, is a top three team, just like they were last season. Yeah. 30 minutes away from, from taking the top spot in the West, unfortunately losing to the team that we were going to talk Kansas about right City. now, Sporting Kansas yeah. City. I'll certainly there and took it all in. I, one other thing I'll add is like, people think this is supposed to happen where you're an expansion team and you're supposed to be a co- compete for MLS Cup. I think FC Cincinnati is going to show people that it's not that easy and maybe we look more like expansion teams in the future, whereas Atlanta and LAFC and Seattle back and they did not. So they have Sporting Kansas City who are involved in CONCACAF Champions League. This is a team that's by and large the same the same team. They did uh, Rubio's no longer with them and they have a lot of game changers. They finished top in the Western Conference. There's going to be some pressure here for LAFC starting at home and trying to get that result because as we were touching on, this is a team that had LAFC's number. It's going to be tough. I, Sporting Kansas City comes in here and gets a result, whatever it is, I wouldn't be surprised because I think this is going to be, again, a lot of pressure on LAFC. But Sporting Kansas City is a really good team. And I, I spoke to Bob Bradley on the week. He even said, I like the way they play, which he doesn't say about everyone. He nope. says he likes the way they play and they engage it. So it could be a really, it's, it's going to be a fun game. Yeah, you look at Sporting Kansas City, and they're already well ahead in their preparations, right? As we record this, they are 3-0 up on Toluca. They are going to Mexico, though. Yes. So the, I think the biggest question is, do they rotate? And if I'm Peter Vermees, which I'm not, but I, if I was being cra- practical, I would look at, I'd look at two things. I would look at this. What is the history of, team, of MLS teams going to Mexico in the competition that I'm in? And what is the history of MLS teams that have maybe started their season with a loss? Well... Ooh. The Mexico, we, we've already, we know that that is the boogeyman, right? CCL teams of MLS that go to Mexico. We've seen it gone haywire so many times. Yeah, with a big lead, can sometimes flip on them and they lose 5-1. So if I'm him, I have that in the back of my mind. Then I look at the other side and I say, last season, Atlanta United MLS Cup champions, their first game of the season was on the road, and what did they do? 4-0 That's loss. That's right, the dynamo. No problem. Yeah. And if you want to take it a step further, Portland, the other team, they lost in their first game on the road. So if I'm him and I'm just playing the, the probabilities and playing the history, I'd probably rotate for this game. Um, and I think that obviously that would benefit LFC, but this is still a team that when he rotates, if I know him, he rotates usually around the, the, pram, the outside of his team. So you're probably still going to see someone like Beasler, probably still going to see Zussi. Uh, I would think I could probably, we should mention no longer I the team gone. that's going to gonna hurt their defensive depth. That's going to hurt their defensive depth. It's going to hurt them in set pieces, which hopefully yeah. LFC can maybe convert on that some of those. That should be exciting. That could be a devi- exciting development from the jump. That is a big, that it will be a big point of emphasis for LFC because, you know, at the end of the season, they finally kind of got that breakthrough. Um, I think Walker, and Eddie Segura is actually a pretty good yeah. set piece guy for a shorter guy. He's good in the air. So, yeah, if they, if they rotate, which, I, again, I think they do, and especially considering if they go through, they play Independiente, and the first leg would be in Panama. Not an easy trip. I think they're going to rotate a little bit, but we're still going to see some... Your path is cleared a bit. I shouldn't say that, but it, it certainly is there for them to take. Yes. Yes. To yes. get to the and semis. I, I wouldn't pull Houston and not play your strongest 11. I would make sure that Toluca just fired their manager. Who knows what kind of bounce they could get from that. Just I just don't trust True. being in Mexico and being in this competition. So I think... Again, we're doing this beforehand. We'll know more. But I think we might see a little bit of a rotated side. And I think that, you know, these two teams, like Bob said, they, they play somewhat similar but somewhat different. Yeah. Sporting KC, I think, is more of a play along the touchline. They build at the back, just like LFC, but they like to play a little more along the touchline. Their wide attackers maybe aren't as wide as our attackers. So it is very different. They have a, and they have a more traditional midfield. Ilya yeah. Sanchez is going to sit right yeah. in front of their defense. They're not going to rotate the way our guys do. It's going to be a good matchup. I think, though... If you're gonna if you're gonna get a little bit of revenge, you're gonna snip Kansas City. Maybe maybe now's the time to play yeah. the team that I think we both agree, along with LFC, is probably gonna be one of the best in the West once again. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a demanding week certainly for Sporting Kansas City, and they're in the midst of it as they get ready for Sunday's game. Frankly, it's a Sunday on a Saturday game for them, but I I think there's a lot of proof there. It's just gonna be interesting how they come out with this. The LFC comes out with their play because the great part about what this team has done is they did they went through all the the tough work during the middle of the first season, bringing in these players, getting one ready, and now it's all set. But how did they, they flick that switch? And I think, based on what we've seen from the team, I don't think that's going to be a, a stretch. I, I anticipate a real uh, commitment from this team right from the jump. So uh, it's a tough opponent, but that's good. And it's the beginning of the schedule is going to be really telling of this team. We're going to know a lot about LAFC, certainly from these first two home games alone. But you, with Portland lurking, which has become a huge rivalry, I think. 
this is a big spot for the same. It's it's about the commitment, but I think they're ready. Yeah, it's Bob kept using the word tests. Yeah, he kept saying, "Will we know absolutely if LFC is good? No. And it, and if we don't do well, will we know absolutely that LFC is bad? No. But we will see tests. And I think you you nailed it. Flipping the switch. That's the one thing. Th this team knows how to play great football. They know how to express themselves on the field. But I think the one thing that might have been lacking towards the end of the season, especially when you consider 30 minutes away, up a man, couldn't turn that their way away from home against Sporting KC. And then obviously the playoff game is just, will they meet the challenge that's in front of them and have that extra edge to do it? The football is there. I just, I want to see them come out and really put a team, just chop them up, yeah. you know, put them in the blender and just, you know. Ooh, now I'm thirsty. Yeah. Chop them up, put them in the okay. blender and, and, and finish a game, finish a game and beat be the bad guys, man. Just go out there and really, you know, play your beautiful football. We didn't see the time. bad guys at the end of last season, but I figured, yeah, that's a, that's that's a good role to play here. Yeah, be sharp, be sharp, be be strong, be hard in the challenge, and it, if you couple that with great football, you're usually going to have great results. Right. Okay. Our projected eleven. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? I, I think am ready. I think it's going to be pretty. Do you want me to go or do you? Well, let's. I mean. I think there's some spots where we can agree that there's probably not much change, All right? right? All so right, so let's start. Start from the back. Tyler, Tyler Miller. Yes. In. In. All right, back four. Uh, Beta Shore right. Yes. Uh, Segura and Walker Zimmerman is your central defensive pairing. And Jordan Harvey at left back. But there is where I, I, I want to take a pause because Mohamed Amonir is a is a projected as a, as a long season play here, correct? Yes. Will he start this weekend? No. No, I don't think so. But... It'd be interesting to see when he starts to pepper around as a left back option and what it does. Harvey's been great. I mean, he's really Jordan Harvey for me is one of the guys uh, who uh, I think you have to put up as one of the most valuable players from last season. He waited and waited. Uh, the, the the younger kids got their chance to play before he did. He waited, and when they threw him in there, no complaints. Solid ninety minutes or eighty five minutes, and he got it done. So that's a really valuable player. But Manier and Manier may be able to do some things that he can't. And that's going to be that's going to be an interesting story as the season progresses. Yeah, Muhammad brings a different wrinkle, and, and you have to say Jordan is Mr. Consistency. He's also you know a, a after the fact captain. Uh, he sets the tone. Him and Beta both. So you look at that and you say, well, maybe Muhammad's not quite ready physically. I think maybe he took like a little knock. Um, so you don't you're not worried about having Jordan there. But I agree with you. He does can do some different things, and. Uh, Good on Jordan, man. He fought it out last season. He's gonna. Yeah. I guarantee he's gonna fight out this season. And the team's gonna be yeah. better for it. And the team so, loves his fight. The team loves the Harvey family. The team, everything about them yeah. just brings so. I, I, they bring so much to this club. So I, I, I don't know if there's all tangible and you can really validate that all the time. But you know it's there. Yeah. So let's go. Let's go midfield. And all right. I think the, the most important part of this team. The most important part of this team. I think this makes it go. If I'm putting the midfield together after the last match, I roll with those guys. Yeah, and a, a Twista, K, Lee win. Yeah, they had the understanding in, in a match that led up to it. You got to reward guys for doing things that correctly. Um, and I think a lot of people maybe are unaware. Andre Horta has been coming back from a little bit of a, an injury. So I don't think he would necessarily be ready anyways. I know people want to see him, but when you couple the, with how well those guys played and him coming back to fitness, this is probably not the game for him. So I, I think you probably agree with me that we should roll with those three. Yes. Okay. Andre Horta again is something we, a player we would like to see at this point. But it, a, it worked uh, in this preseason game, uh, and the guys that you would keep an eye. I think mostly, I, I, I think if K is healthy and ready, K and Lee win are in there unless something happens. Yeah. Mark went 72 minutes last yes. match, so that's a very good sign because you don't want to put a guy in that you know we're gonna have to sub at some point yeah. that you just know. Yeah. Twista's spot is good as we touched earlier because it it, it helps Mark Anthony K in that so-called engine room in the midfield. Uh, but if Kay can take more of that responsibility and get help from Lee Wynn, if, and if it's a Horta, then that's a different option as well. But uh, Twist is the guy, I think, uh, Twist the Horta is, a, is the discussion, much like what we had at left back. Fair enough? Correct. Okay. All right, we'll see. So I think we're all in agreement. And the front three... Well, we know who's going to be on either side. Yeah. I mean, unless they change... Bell, it, Bell, unless, Bell Carlos, yeah, unless Carlos is playing as more of a number 10 role, which we haven't even talked about him in the midfield, that is an option yeah. for people. Uh, but yeah. Carlos has four preseason goals. He's been great. Rossi, we're, we're, I think he's just Rossi had to go to get. Along. He also had to go to get his green card. Yeah, that interrupted his preparations a little bit. But for sure, Rossi's going to be on one side. Bell's going to be on the other. So that leaves one spot, and that's I think, I think maybe the biggest debate on who's going to play in that one yeah. spot. This could, uh, yeah, this could create some arguments in some of our LAFC watering holes around town. I believe 100% which be, um, is it going to be Ramirez? Is it going to be Dio? 
Two guys that had double-digit goals, although for Christian Ramirez, mostly with his former club, Minnesota United, but this was a, a player that they traded for at the time. We're like, wait, you have some options there, but it was because of this day. Yeah. And he had the, the start of the year with the national team game. Everything he's done says, this is a guy who's got all the tutelage, all the fitness into his body that he would need to be starting forward. Local kid, obviously, which is gonna put a lot of pressure on him because he wants, mm -hmm. he would like to, Play here for the rest of his career. I yeah. mean, who wouldn't? I mean, who wouldn't? But more so if you're from, he's from Garden Grove. So, it, because of the players around him, he has a great opportunity. He knows he's going to get service from those five guys in that midfield and in Vela and Rossi. And that means goals. But he has to contribute. Because remember, we saw that from last season, Marco Urena, he had some great chances. He should have had goals, but they didn't come. And that allowed, that brought in Dio. And that's where he could probably seize an opportunity as well. Yeah, getting getting service will be no problem for Christian. It's it's that uh, the flip side of the coin. He needs to be more involved. So on any given day, I have been back and forth. Is it Dio? Is it Christian? I think I'm gonna slightly lean towards Christian if I if I was maybe trying to get in the mind of Bob and I I, don't, I got a dead end there because that's <laughs> that's getting in the mind of Bob is is, is tough. And I, I'm sure if he listened to this, he'd have. Plenty of errors to point out on, our, on our end. He's going to. He's, he's definitely going to listen to I know. this. <laughs> We're going to hear it. We are going to hear it. And I already know it right now. I can already see him in my head. But Christian, I think, one, when you couple with Dio, has not played the amount of time that Christian has. Um, and then if I just look at that last game, the assist for the goal comes from Christian. Takes it with an instep, turns, plays it along. That is exactly what they kept hammering into Christian last season. That's how you got to be involved. Also, I think he was very, very involved defensively uh, pressing. So he did the things that they want. I think if you, if you look at it this way, you say, Dio maybe hasn't played enough and you want to reward a guy for doing the things you want. I think I lean Christian. That being said... And another guy who's waited his time, like Jordan Harvey, yeah. and did not complain. He came in and he gets his chance, which the coaching staff said they would come, and here it is. Mm -hmm. But that being said, I'm never surprised when Dio starts because Dio brings so much dyna dynamic play. He's able to... You, you don't question that Dio can be the link. When he shows up, he can be the link and he can score goals. So that... I mean, that's, that's the biggest selection topic I would say is, is got to be up top. There's some good ones. This is what you want if you're a coaching staff, right? Yes. You want those options it's, and you want those guys to fire each other up. Yeah, it's about competition. It's not about getting guys minutes. It's about competition. Okay. So are we going to leave that there? Do you have a prediction? Or do we stay? I think we just leave that there for... for I got a prediction. Okay. I think this podcast can be a hit. Okay. That was my prediction. Good. I'm, I'm with that. I was going to say we leave it there for fear of uh, what we just brought up with the coaching staff. So we just, okay. we just leave it there. All right. Now we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna let it ride. We're going to let it ride here. When we come back on Inside LAFC, we're going to give a, a little... We're going to look at the games that we think are most up in the air for the Champions League. We'll give our little predictions there. And a little Oscars talk. Because there is a football slash soccer connection. We can talk about Bob Riley. Football. We watch the... We are LAFC. Football, football. 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 Football it is. Inside AFC coming back. Okay, last Sunday, Vince, was uh, the big Sunday LA event was the Oscars, correct? Now this, this is, I'm trying to find some connections here. This Sunday, the big LA event is? Home opener. Home opener. We're all going to be back. back. Well, it's going to be a cool. text from people all over. They all want to come to this game. Oh, yeah. And I have to say no. Excuse me. Uh, Mickey, Mickey Rourke, I don't have tickets for you. He didn't reach out to me. But no. People that ill perhaps did. My tickets have been taken. Perhaps since, they did. My staff tickets have been taken since the season ended. So I don't have any tickets. <laughs> like so don't ask, yeah, don't ask me for tickets. People have already claimed them well. Just handing them off. But Vince can get you some jerseys and stuff. I'm just kidding. No. Come to the store. LAFC HQ. All right. So the Oscars, uh, this is what I love about Twitter. It's because those big uh, Super Bowl Oscars, that's when it's fun and people are engaging. So... Uh, it was interesting to me, and I'll start with the, uh, I had a little fun with the directors, uh, another a Mexican director winning it, so Alfonso Cuaron, he's won two, Alejandro Gonzalez Iñarritu, Iñarritu, he's won two, Yep. and then Del Toro won one last year, Guillermo Del Toro. So five of the last six directors are from Mexico, and I was thinking, if those guys went into football, played for El Tri, they would have won a World Cup by now. You know, Iñarritu, maybe that crafty number five, number six, uh, Guillermo del Toro, I don't know, he could probably put a head a couple balls in, in there. And then uh, Cuaron, that elegant midfielder that can get you from the, the midfield to the attack in, in, in Pronto. Well, and at the very least, they would have been able to direct something. So maybe there's they less, rotation. Yeah, less rotation and maybe they get it through that way. I have to say, 
when there's big Hollywood events, I spend my time monitoring Max's Twitter because I yeah, know yeah, there's yeah. going to be stuff coming out. And I ha- that was one of your stronger tweets. On the flip side, <laughs> the Lady Gaga Bradley Cooper stuff drove me crazy. And you, yeah, and you I bought it. it. You bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. It. I wasn't going to, and I went so, in there. To round this out, I want to just tell a little quick story that's before both of our times that I think, but I think the young people will love. Dustin Hoffman, Midnight Cowboy, for the role of st- you of st- are an old soul. Yes, for the role of a street urchin, Dustin Hoffman is a well-known method John actor. John Boyd, by the way, a best actor in the English language, Correct. in my estimation. So, method actor decides if I'm going to be a street urchin, I'm going to on the streets of New York for uh, an amount of time. He does that, obviously, just like. LA, if you're in the streets of New York for a long amount of time, you're probably gonna run into someone famous. He runs into Sidney Poitier. Ah. Sidney Poitier sees him, wonders, I like Dust- this where the story's going. wonders, Dustin, what are you doing? And he says, well, I got this role, I gotta do this. He goes, actually, you can help me out. Would you, do you have any tips? He goes, yeah, I got a tip for you. Try <laughs> acting. <laughs> and Max, they were acting. They were literally there because they were actors. Uh, yeah, yeah, they were yeah. acting. Yeah. So that's, that's do my- Do you wanna sing? Do you wanna see if we can sing some shallow right now? Yeah. Uh, uh, no. I just waited on that because uh, I, was, I felt a little awkward you, for Bradley Cooper's significant other and I was like, this is getting really awkward, no? Bradley Cooper's significant other who is a uh, swimsuit model and so probably is not worried about anything? anything. Okay, I'm just saying. What happened? All right, let's, yeah, let, that connection. let's go back to soccer. Let's round it out so that we, the people can... By the way, can I say one last thing? Yes. Uh, Queen with Adam Lambert, they call it Queen. So if Adam Lambert could get a little pin mustache and a white tank top, that would be great and I'd buy in as well. I would go to a concert. Yeah. Okay. Queen is about the white tank top and the the, the tight acid wash jeans and the pin mustache. Queen is about the visuals, but don't get me started on that because then we'll be here (laughs) the whole time. We're already running. All right. So Champions League. What do you got? I apologize. I I want to do this publicly in a forum. I said Juventus was my pick to win it. I'm going to stick to it very softly, but obviously now two goals down, it doesn't look good against a team that defends very well. And Cristiano Ronaldo being a bit of a pest at this final. What the heck is he doing? Because I, like I like that. I, I do, but I like Juve, I like Juventus not because of Ronaldo, because yeah. of everybody else. But Dybala and Ronaldo, they should not play together. I, I'm going to say they still get out of this. Because I think Atletico will be so defensive. They'll get an early goal and they'll, they'll find Are you jinxing me again? I got nowhere else to turn. I actually believe that they will get out of this until you just... I didn't know that you were going to go with them, so... Okay. I might be jumping on... And I hate them because I don't pick English teams, although I did pick Liverpool last season. Mm-hmm. I might be jumping on Manchester City. Well, I feel like you jinxed me again, but I'm feeling optimistically confident. I actually was not confident going to that game, so it was easy for me to blame it on you. Uh, but I wasn't feeling I confident. I think, though, if, if Max Allegri goes all out, which people said he was too pragmatic... It, it's going to happen, and I like the Ronaldo saying five Champions League to year zero because that's what he's going to need to be like. He's going to have he's to fire it up because he was here. But tell me, where's what's if we, we're looking at one more game? What's your what's your big game that you actually <laughs> actually want to see and you want to see fireworks in it? I want to see Barcelona and Leon because I have enough question marks for Barcelona and the way they're playing right now. I, I think they're going to get through here, but I don't think it's going. It's going to be sweaty brow, sweaty palms for Barcelona because uh, Fakir's coming back for Leon. I think. This could be interesting. I don't see Barcelona score. I think they're a very frustrated team. Yeah. And I don't think they're going to last long in this tournament anywhere, because there's any way, but I think there's stronger teams that are playing more collective. But I'm going to be watching that, and I think, I think Bayern Munich kind of runs Liverpool at this point. I mean, even though that's close, I think they get out comfortably. And those are the, the, the I think we talked about the closest ones. So I think Real Madrid is, is by and large through. I don't yes. think Manchester United is coming back against PSG. So those are the no. ones. Uh, Barcelona, Leon, I'm in. And uh, I'll be watching the event to see if they can make that comeback. Yeah, I mean, Barcelona has to rely on Messi. And well, what a horrible problem to have. But I, I think but they right. have to rely on other people. Yeah, they're, 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 dis- rely on other people they're they disjointed. They can't figure out how to defend. I feel like maybe this might be the end of that cycle. And they're going to have to yeah. retool a little bit again. Uh, the Liverpool game, I was... N- Actually surprised that Liverpool did not use the speed of their attackers because Bayern's center backs cannot turn to save their lives. Right, it's like enough. watching a battleship try to turn around. I thought Bayern was just like, they were being wet. I, I wish teams went for the away goal a little bit more. Yeah. And I think they go, you have the possession, go after it. But they're so tentative and it, it gets in people's heads 100%. But they got lucky not to concede a goal. Well, no, I agree with you. If they're able to get that 0-0, now, 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 now they're starting to make... The, I think getting that yeah. away goal, 1-1 is better than 0-0. Yeah. Even if you give a goal... Yeah. Yeah. Is I, that your? So are we in agreement again? I, or do you have yeah, a, we're in agreement again. I don't like it. You're not feeling a Porto Roma? Uh, Roma. I don't know. Okay. Good. So one in the books then. One in the books. Uh, we'll have to do this again. Hopefully. We'll see. We'll have to get clearance. But this. Yes. Was, hey, I just want to point out to everyone: Vince La Rosa is completely 100% behind getting this off the ground. Did all the footwork. Gave me a lovely little rundown as well. 
I'm thrilled to be participating in it, but it's uh, the hard work of what Vince does and so many others at LAFC that makes this possible. So well done. And bring looking, all, forward to, looking forward to many Bring all these. complaints, questions, concerns to myself. That's basically and what then I'm I will saying. pass them along to Max. Okay, yeah, you know where to find us. So you have on social, uh, LAFC Vince. Right? LAFC Vince. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll do this Tell, next tell week. us where to find you. Embrados ESPN, and then Embrados on Instagram if you want to see visual photos. I was just at uh, Medieval Times. Let me tell you about Medieval Times. I'll save that for next week. All right. All right, Bernard. I hope you're watching. Bye. Bye.